By the 90s, there were actually a large number of women in the Valley, and some of the most experienced people were women. So NetApp benefited by this, and NetApp actually had a lot of senior women. The executive engineering team was 40% women. And if you look at every functional organization, there were senior women in it. Um, what I was finding at the time, though, was that I had a very hard time hiring young women. I would do college recruiting, and I would come back with men. And I recruited every place at the time. So I would go to baby showers recruiting, and I would come back with men. Um, I just could not find young women for NetApp. And I didn't realize it at the time, but what I was seeing was this massive drop in the pipeline of women going into computer science. So I think it's interesting to think about if that hadn't happened, how would Silicon Valley be different? I have to think that had that not happened, even if you did have conscious and unconscious bias, it probably wouldn't be as harmful as it is today. As you say, well, what is the driving force? What is the skill that you can benefit kids the most with? Like, it's probably making them digitally able to operate, to, to, to not just use, but to actually run and change the world in a digital way. And I've also compared it to the printing press and said, look, like, you know, we live in a period of time where creating things digitally is like, a, is like the printing press. Suddenly you can disseminate knowledge in new ways that you just never could have beforehand. If only 20% of the people graduating from college have computer science degrees, then <coughs> only 20% of them know how to actually write. Like maybe they know all, maybe a lot of them know how to use it, but only 20% know how to write. And think about that. Like what would our literature look like if only 20% of women knew how to write? Like what would that, what would be the implications for policy and for society?